Boop. Zach, hello. Hello. I, uh, I've been watching Yu-Gi-Oh. You, you have. Uh, uh, we've been talking about it quite a bit. I've sent you a lot of memes for a future video. Uh, Zach, would you like to know how long the Yu-Gi-Oh document is at this moment? How how long is the uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh document? Is it is. It, uh, I think it was over five hundred pages last I checked. No, that that's the um, that's the PowerPoint is currently at uh, about six hundred oh. slides. Okay, excellent. Would you like to know how many? pages on google docs the script is that i am going to force you and zeb to read uh well over 150 200 maybe uh it is currently at 104 104 pages wow that is uh, uh those are uh, well, 104 eight and a half by 11 sheets uh single or double space uh 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 something in the middle all right so uh liberally to paragraph breaks uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to see that, we have a second channel. Uh, there's al There also should still be a nerd poll in the description. There might not be. I don't know. It's hard to say. Redist is here. Hello. That's me. Redist, hello. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at the lion judges the wolf at Tumblr. Uh, on Tumblr.com. Uh, uh, where you do uh, Game of Thrones, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire takes. Am I correct in saying Yes, that? yes. That's where my Aswaf takes will go. Nice. Uh, I understand that you have a theory for us today? Boy, do I have a theory. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, we just did a trolley problem of Ice and Fire, and uh, uh, I am overwhelmingly excited to do something that isn't insane <laughs> oh no oh no no this one this one's it's not that insane you just have to well i'll start i'll start off off strong i'll start us off strong you do have to uh House. so this theory supposes uh, that young griff is Aegon. okay all right we will and that's what we're gonna start out with young uh griff it is is Aegon. Aegon the sixth Targaryen. Yes. Okay. I can buy that. I I don't necessarily think that it is true. Me uh, but I can buy it. Yeah. It's not necessary for this theory, but it makes this theory stronger, I guess. It gives it a reason to exist. <sighs> Okay, yes. We're yawning already. <laughs> it's been a long day, I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, we, we just came off of that of that madness and I'm I'm and trying then, to like uh, I'm like coming down, you know. Yeah, yeah, the uh, things got really uh, high stakes during that uh, trolley episode. Uh Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, the uh uh Zach made me choose uh between gummy worms and gummy bears as one of his problems. <gasps> oh no. That's not true. That's a different trolley problem. <laughs> as we established. I did make you choose between uh, uh, Ned and Cat Stark and uh, lemon cakes. And Oof. you'd be surprised which one Tom picked. <laughs> well, you see, one of these things is real. <laughs> uh, no, it was a, a very specific number of fictional lemon cakes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> trade trade offer you you receive ned and catlin stark i received 10 million lemon cakes yes <laughs> yeah yeah i love this show trade offers from the grim reaper uh or uh, uh the god of death oh my god okay perfect fantastic so is this our starting point that's your starting point, but I, I have, obviously, additional quotes in case you don't get very far with that one. All right. Zach, would you like to explain the rules to this game? Uh, uh, well, goodness, we're, we're explaining the rules. Sure. Uh, often called uh, Give Me Another Card or multiple other uh, uh, names. Uh, this is our uh, method of uh, getting people to uh, walk through in a Song of Ice and Fire theory that's fun uh, to do. Uh, with friends to explain the theory instead of just explaining it out loud we have some information 
we're going to say things we know about that information in the Song of Ice and Fire that we think is related. Uh, if we brush up on something that's correct or close to correct, uh, the person doing the, uh, you know, who has the theory will say ding, and we try and solve what the theory is. Uh, by the way, as I've been watching, rewatching a ton of Tom Scott videos, I'd like to say this idea is lovingly ripped off from Citation Needed. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't it didn't occur to me until i was got went on a citation needed binge like this just is citation needed with a song of ice and fire theories excuse me <laughs> this is not citation needed <laughs> this is tom's this is not a bit by the way for anyone who doesn't know where the idea for this originally came from this is actually uh uh one of my argumentative methods when i uh, uh, when I want to lead someone to a conclusion, uh, uh, I collect evidence and and present it in this sort of a fashion. Um, That's kind of fun. It it's uh, extremely fun. Um, it's not terribly intellectually honest. Uh, <laughs> no, because you are the one who decides what information the people you are convincing obtain. <laughs> Uh, uh, but that doesn't mean that it is, that doesn't mean it's not fun, and it doesn't mean it's not useful. Uh, so, like, if you, if you, if you are speaking to someone who, I may have to cut this. If you are speaking to someone, maybe, maybe this will be a, a, I don't know, a Patreon extra. If you're speaking to someone who believes things that are bad, right? If you are speaking to someone who thinks that the earth is flat, um... This is a this is one of the methods that I have employed to lead them away from that position, um, because if you present them with individual pieces of evidence that and let them draw the strings themselves, they're more likely to believe it. Yes. Exactly. Um, now you can also use this power for evil, unfortunately. Yes. Um, you can make you could convince some way that the Earth is flat. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This is, this is absolutely how propaganda is done. Also, yeah. Yes. Uh, um, however, when this is like when both parties are using this method um the party that is correct um is the party with the advantage i'm not going to say that they are the party that wins um but they are the party with the advantage um uh because it is it is harder to come up with um with false evidence um that both parties can agree is true does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 both uh, uh, both parties can agree the books are written by George R. R. Martin. Um, so that is a fine piece of evidence. Uh, both parties sure may not Preston be able to... Let's say again. You sure it wasn't Preston Jacobs? Uh, uh, you have been reading too many of George Martin's fan fictions. You're so right. <laughs> um, it is more difficult to get both parties to agree that young Griff is Aegon the Sixth Targaryen. Uh, that makes for a more. Uh, uh, a, a, then we begin to uh, uh, have some real interesting discussions about some real crazy shit. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh. That that is the origin of this game. This is a tactic that I actually use when arguing with people. Um, uh, turns to camera two. Use this sparingly and honestly. And if you are caught attempting to convince people of bad things using this method, that is not my fault. You used bad information. <laughs> yep. Is this is this an outtake or are we rolling? And we're back. And we're back. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Whether that we left is still a mystery. Yes. Uh, uh, whether we left is still a mystery is a good name for a podcast. Uh, 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 Zach, tell me about Aegon the Sixth. Aegon the Sixth, uh, young Griff, uh, is, if you believe it, uh, the son of, uh, Rhaegar and Elia, who was whisked away, another baby was swapped in, uh, King. To... Oh! So Supposedly, a baby swap saved Aegon's life. Yeah, uh, if you believe uh, Varys' uh, timeline of events, that is correct. Uh, 
so wait in within this theory we are uh, are we operating under the assumption that this is true so yes are, so a baby swap saved Dagon's life okay yes yeah yeah this because this is true we all understand that this is true this is true you know i'm actually going to uh young griff actually i'm gonna ask you a favor so this theory yeah. has three parts so um until i tell you to 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 do otherwise i'm gonna want you to start putting evidence in one corner okay do we do we still want this one in the middle yeah that one can be in the middle okay um and a baby swap save Egon's life so uh why don't why don't you come up uh why don't you come up here oh sugar honey iced tea well somebody's name is getting moved i don't know who it is who is this under here can anybody tell shit Wait. Uh, Damn it. it might be right between me and Zelazor. Oh, oh, it's oh, okay. Zelazor. Wait, it's not Zelazor. Who is this? Damn it, Zach, who is this? It's Sergio. It's, it's Sergio. Sergio, you're coming up with Egon. I'm sorry. If you want your name to be occasionally moved around when we make a terrible <laughs> mistake, you can support us on Patreon. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I'm going to do that for every piece of evidence this theory. Excellent. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take somebody with me. If you, I, I very quietly, uh, without uh, uh, mentioning it, uh, put uh, my musician name in the bottom right corner. Uh, and you can move that along, too. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Waited, you probably should have waited until you uh, to see how long it would take you to notice. But there's a good argument that the answer is never. Zach, I might literally never have noticed. It's very light on the screen. Yeah, also, I can't see it. I don't think it's on the video. Uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I think that that is outside of the capture area. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was gambling. Uh, 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 gambling is my favorite uh, uh, dwarf from The Lord of the Rings. Yes, that's, that's Ayo. correct. Uh, I, I met him at a convention. Uh, it was a gambling convention. Wait, no, uh, maybe uh, maybe gambling is my favorite... Um, gambling gambling is my favorite sword from The Lord of the Rings. Gam, gam, gambling the, 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 the foe hammer. Yeah. Turns turns to camera too. I had in, I had, I, had, I in, thought of three jokes that didn't work to follow that one up at in, the same time. In the comments below, t tell me if gambling sounds more like Glamdring or Gimli. <laughs> I vote Glamdring. We like yeah, that one I better. Agree. I agree. That yeah. one's more correct. This is this is Biffer Boffer and Glamdring. Wait, no, gambling. My god. I can't. My brain stopped working. I can't see anything but Seto Kaiba. Uh. That's a, a pretty traumatic brain injury you've just suffered. It's, I like, I, it's, you know that, like, disorder that people have where everyone's face kind of looks the same? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've given myself that, except it's, everyone has Yugi's hair. tough crowd today <laughs> jesus my god this is like my fourth bit of the day that has been reacted to with silence or oh I, no I, no no I, it's good i, I just think, i just I really want to picture it I, th wow. I think i've also melted everybody's brains the last video we did i think that's a, a very likely outcome that was a good one uh, uh, Redist, I'm sorry. This video is going to be a disaster, and there's nothing yeah, we, we can do about it. Uh, 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 Tom, Tom is still after. internally debating how many uh, uh, lemon cakes it takes to equal a human life, and then multiplying it by two. Uh, 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 yeah, except instead of lemon cakes, they're lemon magician girl. <laughs> nice. I forgot there's other brain rot uh, hitting you. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, uh, okay, so a baby swap saved Aegon's life. Will we, will, I'm trying to keep us on the rails, the trolley rails. Are, uh, is, is it helpful if we start talking about other baby swaps? Uh, it could be. Mm. Is, is this like a, uh, there was a one massive baby swap theory? Because I was going to write that one day. Uh, that yeah. would be so fun. Don't is, spoil that. That's not what this is. Is it the baby multiplication theory? 
every there was there every baby swap you think happened did happen, but they like had a spot mate for babies. Literally everybody who was everybody who is roughly pregnant or had a small child at the same time just showed up and it's like, okay, you get Daenerys and I'll get Aegon and you get John and you get uh Mira Reed and you get uh Val. <laughs> hey, I have a hollow black luster soldier. Can I trade it for your Aegon? That one's <laughs> <laughs> Who might be missing from this have, baby swap? I have, I have, I have a secret rare Craster's baby. Oh, that's that's garbage. Oh no! This one's a holographic. <laughs> no, it's garbage. <laughs> Worthless. Uh, it's it's worth like two cents. Yeah, it's worth less than the original card. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Nobody's running Jon Snow these days. Every, everyone's everyone's running uh, uh everyone's running the reprint Aemon Targaryen. The Daenerys deck is busted, dude. They should ban it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying I can't think of another uh, Targaryen uh, who has a 62% win rate <laughs> you play Daenerys fuck I hate Burn. <laughs> yeah uh, these are trading so card good. jokes I hope you showed up for trading card jokes <laughs> oh my god oh holy shit Oh my god, I do not, I do not have, <laughs> I, I keep on, I keep on trying to play, uh, uh, fucking Jesus Christ. Wow, that would be a good card, fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that'd be a good one. Oh, that's not an expletive, that's a noun, uh, that's a verb, fuck. Oh no. Uh... Oh, I feel God. like I feel like Jesus Christ had a special uh, uh, ability if you use him as a sacrifice. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Oh God. He um, would like come back into your deck three turns later. Yes. And <laughs> the in the monster in the monster you uh, uh, summon is absolved of sin. He he has uh. Uh, he has synergy with with other rect resurrected cards, which weirdly includes the Lazarine. Yeah. Man, everyone, so swaps. everyone's <laughs> laughing at Zach's bits today. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like because Lazarine sounds like Lazarus. Yeah, and, yeah, they, yeah. and they sure derive does. they derive from the same root, and there's uh uh there's speculation that 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 could be symbolically related. Uh, but the Lazarine in Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know enough about Yu-Gi-Oh. No, like the Lazarine in from a Song of Ice and Fire. A Song of okay. Ice and Fire, and Lazarus, the character from the Bible. Uh. Oh, I thought you meant Lazarus from Yu-Gi-Oh! No, Lazarus oh, from the dark. Bible, because we were talking about Jesus Christ. I forgot about the Bible! Who had an interaction with... <laughs> who who rezzed Lazarus. <laughs> he cast Monster yes. Reborn on Lazarus. <laughs> yes, that's correct. This is the joke Welcome that I'm telling? Welcome yeah. to our Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Welcome uh, to our Yu-Gi-Oh! video. We've trapped Reddist here. <laughs> we now talk I've about Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! three times. For the next eight hours. <laughs> Oh lord. Reddist, this is a great time to ask. Would you like to kick in the door on the Yu-Gi-Oh video? <laughs> sure can try. I don't know if I'll have much to say. No, that's fine. Um we are we are doing a possibly 6 hour, possibly 11 hour video explaining all of the oh, Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. anime. Well, um, I'm sure that I'll be available at some point during that. <laughs> yeah. Um and and Zach and Zeb are allowed to call in friends for up to ten minutes at a time. Okay, okay. If I'm available, I'm in. Okay, which, like perfect. I said, I should be at some point. Perfect, perfect. It's gonna be uh, a true fucking nightmare. Oh, uh, it is absolutely. I'm so excited. 
Uh, should I study or should I just go in blind? Oh my god, no, p- do not study, please. Okay. Uh, 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 you, your job is to show up and help, um, but uh, you, you have to show up only with the knowledge you have. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh god. My, my brain hurts. Uh, <clears throat> and we're back. And we're back. Hopefully and we're back. not having to do that multiple times this baby, episode again. Baby swaps. Baby swaps. Baby swaps. And the lack thereof. You have so much editing to do, Tom. Oh god. This is this this is this, I'm so tired. Um <laughs> maybe we just don't edit this video at all. <laughs> we just send it. We, we kinda have to. Uh no. Why? Why? <laughs> I can I can just say something that forces you to edit. Uh, oh this. my god! No, don't do it, please. Sex Pope. <laughs> it's already on the screen. Thank Thank you, Sex Pope, for supporting us on Patreon. <laughs> thank you, Sex Pope, for guaranteeing our videos are harder to monetize. I don't think YouTube knows how to read Sex Pope in a faded chalk font. What do you mean? I YouTube one hundred percent can do that. And we'll, we're back. We'll find out. And we're back. Baby swaps. Baby swaps. Baby swaps. Baby swaps. Baby swaps do 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 do. Hey. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, there's a baby swap that takes place at the wall. Is that a ding? No. There is a baby swap that takes place po- with uh, Jon Snow, maybe? Uh, not a ding. Um, many people think that is is Daenerys a Blackfire? Is that where we're going? No, that's too easy. Um, is Daenerys? Well, okay. Well, what ha- who who had that baby to swap? We assume it's just some random like orphan baby, or like Varys says, it's just some uh, piss water prince or something of that sort. Uh, but this theory is not about the other baby; it's about the other child. Oh, is that it's about Ariella. Uh, it's about the other, like, uh, they're pretty sure they ID'd Rael's, uh, body. Tom hey. has argued before that, uh, there was a, another child swap there. Okay, one so I'm gonna uh, read a long this, passage. That actually be the first one on the channel. Sor- yeah, Sorella Greyjoy, our first video. Would I'm gonna read, read a long passage, video? and you don't need to, wa- like, write down all of it, okay. okay? Yeah. Kevin Lannister had been here in this very hall, when Tywin had laid the bodies of Prince Rhaegar's children at the foot of the Iron Throne, wrapped up in crimson cloaks. The girl had been recognizably the Princess Rhaenys. You can include that part. But the boy, a faceless horror of bone and brain and gore, a few hanks of fair hair. None of us looked long. Tywin said it was Prince Aegon, and we took him at his word. R-H-E-Y-R-H-A-E-N-Y-S, Rhaenys? Yes. Um, is that the only part that... Yeah, that's the important part. I just like the full quote. And you want all these up in the same corner? Yes. Girl has been recognizable as the Princess Rhaenys. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I forgot to take somebody's name with me. Um. You could go ahead and take Harper. Aunt Janemba? Uh, I believe that is Aunt Janemba. Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um... Perfect. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Uh, there are some interesting things surrounding this. Um, uh, uh, should we talk about, um, uh, uh, their lineage? They are half Dornish. Yeah, they Uh, are, they're, they're Elias kids. mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, also, uh, of dope. Elia could not safely have more kids. So those were the last kids she was going to have with I'm anybody. I'm going to say ding. Okay. Ooh. But put this in another corner. Okay. Uh, this is a quote from Doran Martell. I have worked at the downfall of Tywin Lannister since the day they told me of Elia and her children. They, they told me of Elia and her children. Doran Martell. Duran Duran said that actually. I'm hungry. I'm hungry like the lion. 
One for you, like the sun with a spear in it. Uh, please give me free form. Weep. Weep. Put that like up here. Boop. 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 I'm just going to make sure that that is still on screen. Oh, yeah. We got plenty of space. Okay, perfect. Okay, fantastic. Um, see, this is all. This is all very interesting. So we are talking about, we're talking about Dorn. We're talking about young Griff. Um, uh, young uh, uh, Doran had a pact with the last Targaryens. They, uh, oh, yes, nice. Uh, okay. Exactly that sentence. Yeah, he, he had the marriage pact. Uh, well, with, uh, say, it may or may not be true, but say who it was with but but that's it was uh it was uh it. Viserys and uh uh Arianne were supposed to get married if you believe that document which could have been forged but had a pact with Viserys and Daenerys um should we talk about who this was signed by nah well it, it's it was uh Danny was only like tangentially, I think, looped into it. Is this in the same corner? Uh that'll be in the in the same corner as that one, yes. Bless you. Thank you. All right. Um uh Viserys Targaryen is dead. Viserys Targaryen got his, his face truly and fully melted. That is true. Um, yes. The pact is no longer enforceable. Is uh, Quentin part of this theory? Are Quentin or Arianne part of this theory? Arianne? No. No, not really? No. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Zach, what are you thinking here? Oh gosh. We've got some, we've hmm. got some good so, pieces. So there's a Martell connection here, right? Like mm -hmm. the fact that these uh if we're arguing the uh Rainis was not killed, then it would have had to have been somebody who looks like a Dornish Targaryen uh uh you know mixed child uh which is probably a very very small subset of people if we're if we're arguing that it was not in fact Rhaenys who was killed right like the number of people who can stand in for Rhaenys th there aren't a lot of Targaryens and there aren't a lot of like uh th there are a disproportionate number of cross kingdom marriages they're the exception not the role usually uh and usually it's the more prominent houses like if you're a smaller house no nobody in like you know the reach is marrying into the manhoodies right or at least not that we're aware of uh usually if you're marrying to somebody from a different kingdom you're somebody like you know ned stark marrying somebody from the riverlands or uh even even some of the people who live inside uh their kingdoms like uh uh, Joanna Lannister uh, married to Tywin. They both live in the Westerlands, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you a so, ding for marriage. Okay. So, uh, I've got another quote, and I want this full quote. Okay. I have a son. You have a daughter. My Joff and your Sansa shall join our houses. As Lyanna and I might once have done. And that is Bobby B to Ned. Is this a real theory? This is a real theory. I am sure that it is correct. If uh, assuming things. I I have this is a, I this one's interesting. 
Uh, do we want this in a new section? Uh, no, that's going to be in the in the original corner. All right. Get on, get on up there. Uh, yeah, we'll send. Uh, we'll send. Let's see who we got in here. Who? Uh, Matt. Boards and... Matt and bugs don't like caffeine. Yes. Are all coming together. Uh, so. Curious. Um, before... so is it, is, is this like a redo theory? Is this like a um, there needed to be a, a Targaryen Martell alliance for another reason that we're not aware of, and that's why uh, Doran's insistent about having it happen again. Cold. And Janemba, I'm sorry, I have covered up your um, uh, ghost. I've covered up your your adorable little ghost. Oh no, that's not a ghost. That is a, that's a Pokemon. Uh, is it which, a ghost type? Which Pokemon? No, it's um, it's a Gulpin, I believe. Hmm. Uh, before we move on, I want to bounce off something you said, Zach. You said there's not a lot. That, that um uh that specific um like uh uh combination of of parents that combination of of genealogy is yeah. rare and you would be correct um if house dane didn't exist um that's true the danes if if marrying martels or indeed most people from that part of um of Dorn, uh, probably would have complexion just like Rhaegar's kids. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the the a uh, a Dane uh, intermarried with Martells or not, or intermarried uh, like that. And there's the two types of Dornish: just the sandy and salty Dornish. So you might get. Some, but I don't know if that makes you look Targaryen. But uh, I don't know if you bloody up a corpse enough. Maybe it's enough to pass. Well, well we it's know th- to say. we know that the Danes look Targaryen, for sure. The Danes look Targaryen for sure. So a Dane uh, married into another Dornish family, those kids might look uh, yeah. Targaryen esque. Yeah, uh, or, and also or, or this close enough. This um, that's not the first time we've seen this. Um, we saw this in um, in Dunkin' Egg, right? Um, uh, uh, May May uh, May. My car's children uh, uh, are described as having hair that is sandy, not um, uh, not golden, because of their Dornish heritage. Um, Aegon is an exception to that. Uh, and I haven't really spent much time thinking about this. And maybe there's a theory in here somewhere. There might be a theory in there, but it it doesn't sound like it's this theory. That is not this theory. Okay, fine. <laughs> but it's interesting for sure. Okay. All right. Um so we are talking about we are talking about houses coming together. If we bark up the the genealogy tree, is there something to be found there? If you bark real far. You got to bark real hard. Okay. Uh you, I have a son, you have a daughter. My Joff and your Sansa shall join our houses as Liana and I might once have done. I have a son, you have a daughter. I have a son, you have a daughter. This isn't just like foreshadowing an, an Ariane match, is it? No. Okay. Alright, we have the pact. We have Doran working against... Tywin. This is an anti-Lannister theory. Baby yes. Swap saved Aegon's life. Is this is this a theory about the identities of the children swapped in? Is this like are are we have you discovered the identity of the baby who was swapped in for Aegon? Would be very cool. It would be very cool, but that's not what we're looking for? No. Damn. Do you want a card? Zach, I'm thinking about a card. 
Yeah, I think we need a card. I, I agree. Okay. I hope this this helps and doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. um, Aureus Baratheon married a Durandan daughter for legitimacy and kept her sigil. O R Y S Baratheon, and it's D U R R A N D O N. Excellent. Uh, for legitimacy. Um. I can't imagine this is relevant, um, but Stir the Magna of Then marries a Karstark and modifies their sigil and takes it as his own. Uh, that's about as relevant as the information I just gave you. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, the the Durandans were lords, they were kings of Storm's End. They were Storm Kings. And they historically had, um, they, they historically fought with the Marcher Lords and the, the, uh, the Princes of Dorne. Is that relevant? No, it's yeah. correct though. I'm really, I'm really stumped. Yeah, this is. So, so let's let's talk about the legitimacy, right? Like, obviously, uh, um, we uh, we don't have a great description, as you'll think, of Orius Baratheon and what he looked like exactly. Do we? Uh, I I cause... don't think so. I I have to assume he is this in a new place. It's gonna be with the first corner. Okay. I have to assume that he looked Targaryen. Well, um, but I see people draw him as if he's like you know just Robert, but you know skinny. Uh, well, and... he he was thought to be Aegon's bastard half brother. Yeah, so, but so so, but he 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 had black hairs and black eyes. So we know so he did. Yeah, uh, that is according to citation. Uh, the world of ice and fire, uh, fire and blood. Get a beard to uh in the world of ice and fire and three sources on that what so from george's own writing so he didn't need to like you know have his kids look the part although maybe they didn't look ex uh exactly uh as a um, baratheon right uh what how hold on what so how, did, how does to... oris baratheon who is Orion's who is Oris no, Baratheon's mom? No, the eye color is wrong. So maybe it was an eye color thing, but honestly, that's such a minor detail. Uh hair color is way more prominent. Uh from a distance too. Yeah, they were th we, there's a whole book about it. Yeah, yes, correct. Uh famously. Uh Who wait a minute. Okay, so you're telling me that Oris Baratheon, let's take the rumor as true. Oris Baratheon uh the first bastard half brother not only didn't look Targaryen but looked like a modern Baratheon. Yeah, looked not indistinct from a modern Baratheon and not indistinct from the Duradons that he'd be marrying into. Yeah, it'd be, I had, it'd be I, like Go ahead. It, it'd be like me uh uh you know Becoming the king of Ireland and then marrying uh, into an Irish family for legitimacy, even though I'm already Irish. Well, Irish American, but you know, predominantly like uh, I, you could throw me in the middle of Dublin and until you hear my uh, stereotypical, uh, you know, uh, Buffalo area accent, you're not going to think anything's off. But Buffalo area Targaryen. Yeah, uh, because because, you know. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know, ha have that ancestry. And it seems like or Oris Baratheon already had some Stormlander or at least non-Targaryen ancestry, right? Yeah, that like, shit is crazy. I, this entire time, I had been, like, full on... I assumed it was, like, the Strongs yeah. that, like, Ooh. nestled on in there. That's possible. Like, the, 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 this basically, uh, uh, 
means he has either Andal or First Ben blood already. Yeah. And and those genetics are like super duper important in uh Westeros uh for political and magical reasons. More so than they are in this like, you know, the real world. Like uh obviously we're way cooler with immigration and don't have uh uh as much uh not to say that we don't have tension between different groups, but it's certainly not the uh uh level of fantasy worlds uh get to be. So uh so okay. so the fact he looks completely different has completely different genetics is fascinating because Aegon the Conqueror and his sisters by all account are Targaryen through and through. Yeah. They have the white silvery hair. They have the purple eyes. So like first off I had been assuming that the that the rumors surrounding Oris Baratheon surrounded Oris Baratheon for the same reason as every other rumor of bastardy, right? The the children of Rhaenyra Targaryen are rumored to be the child to be illegitimate because they look a whole lot like Harwin Strong. Uh, the children of Robert Baratheon are rumored to be illegitimate because they look a whole lot like um uh uh they look a whole lot like Jamie Lannister and his actual children look a whole lot like him. Aenar yeah. Targaryen's bastard child looks nothing like him. And yet the and rumors it's rumored that he's Yeah, the the rumor is that he is uh uh the bastard uh, brother of Aegon the First. I think never that means never proven, it, never proven at all. But that means it has to be true, right? You don't spread a rumor that 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 a child who looks nothing like the parent is the right you you don't spread the, that the, rumor unless you have real you good su- evidence you don't successfully spread that rumor exactly yeah, like the, there are multiple people you could say oh they're half brother uh to me who look nothing like me uh many of my uh many of my good friends i don't think you could convince people that uh jackson and i are uh well Maybe that's not the best example, but like a very different hair color, very different build, very different facial features. Like it would take some doing to assume that we're related in any capacity. Exactly. Uh, that that when used as a political attack, um, gets its value from its legitimacy. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it has to be believable, or, or for one reason or another. And if it's not uh, reasonable at a glance, if it's not reasonable by looking at, like, you look at me and my brother and I say, that's my brother. You're going to be like, yeah, that's your brother. Uh, There has to be some compelling evidence we don't know about. Because they certainly don't look related. That is extremely, it is extremely interesting. Redis, is any of this relevant? No. Damn it. Okay. No. I'm scheduling a a Y episode. Yeah. I am scheduling a Y episode about this. I am scheduling a Y episode about this. Um. Uh, I uh, uh, would like another card. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, same. okay. Elia does not attempt a baby swap for Rainies. Interesting. Well, that that presumes that Elia was privy to the baby swap. Yeah, it does. Which we don't know for sure. Um, we don't know there was a baby shot, baby swap for starters, but no, we do. In this theory, we do. In this theory, we do. And in this uh, theory, in this we know theory, that she was she was privy to it. I assume that's okay. up in so, up in this corner. Uh, in the left corner, yeah. So she was privy to it. She she did not attempt baby swap, possibly because she didn't think like there was anybody who could fill in for like Rainey's people had seen Rainey's. Rainey's was like old enough to have a pet cat. Like she spoke words. People had had conversations with her. It's a lot harder to swap. Uh, her out than a baby that was born rather recently that fewer people have seen that nobody can remember the personality of uh, stuff like that hmm Tom I think it's fair to say you can't, it's easier to swap out a baby than it is a toddler for sure um, all babies are identical um Okay, so like, but like, but like, but like. So in in this theory, Rhaenys is dead, for sure. Is that correct? 
Is, is that safe to assume, Redis? She's dead, so. Okay. A baby swap saved Aegon's life. Or is Baratheon married a Durandin? Married a Durandin and kept her sigil. Okay. Did she not attempt a baby swap for Rainey's? Be because she, because Rainey's was already promised to some no. Hello. Because Aegon was already promised to somebody. No, no, no. It's not about being promised. It's because... about logic. Logic. Okay, so. Well, lo logically, like, if the, uh, a baby is easier to smuggle out than a toddler, a baby is easier to disguise than a toddler, uh, their window had fully closed by that point to, like, get out the recognizable people safely. Uh, there was an argument that it was they were late getting uh, Viserys and, uh, um, goodness, what's uh, his mom's name? Mad King's wife, uh, whose name I always forget. Uh, there, uh, there was an argument. Rayella? Yeah. Rayella. Rayella was very pregnant at the time. There's an argument they should have got them to Dragonstone way sooner. Uh, the second they realized there was a shot, they lost the war. They should have been the safest place they possibly could be. Uh, was it was it just that, like, Aegon was the only person they thought they could save if they think you can only get a baby out and nobody else? Unfortunately, you pick that one hundred percent of the time. Like if it, if it's, you have a choice between saving one of your kids or zero of your kids, and you have two kids, that sucks. But you save the one kid. That's not it. Hmm. Um. Uh, did she not attempt to save Rainey's because Rainey's had already been saved? Uh, she had a previously she swapped. She had yeah. She had previously swapped Rainey's uh, like those two Targaryens, one of whom went to the Silent Sisters. Right. No. Uh, Rainey's was already safe. She was in. Um, she was already in Old Town, um, and no. that that's what she's actually um, the the Sand Snake, who. She, she's actually the Sand Snake, who is the daughter of the Septon. No. Okay. Damn it. Dude, you picked a hard one. Yeah, this is tough. I can give you more cards, but you have everything here. We have everything that here? That is required for you to get the first part of the theory. Okay, interesting. All right, so we're looking. I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing my pen. Hang on. We are looking for this. A son and a daughter to join two houses. Yes. We have... Rain Rainies is dead. She's not here. Aegon is around. So we're looking for someone that Aegon is going to marry. No. Interesting. Don't mark out Rainies. Don't mark out Rainies. She is dead. Rainies but don't mark dead. her out. Tyburn <laughs> <laughs> is going to resurrect Rainies, <laughs> who is no. going... Who is, uh, it's going to be an Oedipus thing. <laughs> and Rhaenys no. is going to, to marry Aegon without realizing they're related. And then because she's a zombie, she's going to eat him. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe this is literal. Did he literally do something on this day? And that's what we're looking for. No, I, I would leave those two quotes aside for now. Let's fuck. just figure out the first part. Fucking fuck. God damn it. I can give you another card, but I don't think it's going to be that helpful. No, I want it. I want to get there. Okay. Um, Elliot does not attempt to say, okay. A Durandan daughter. So uh, Oris marries a Durandan daughter. The Durandan daughter is... um. That that is the house that he was fighting at the time. The house yeah, the, he has just killed the Duridan king, uh, who yes. I believe only has daughters. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so he marries them to take over. Is this sort of 
Arianne's going to inherit from uh, Doran. He's promised that. So whoever marries Arianne, their children would, could take over Doran, and she's pledged to marry Targaryen. That would get the Targaryens a rightful seat back on the continent. I don't, I don't think that's where we're going, because what we're looking for uh, 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 is Aegon is going to marry the house that he, that, that, He's going to marry into the house that he fights and defeats. So, so this is a theory of, of, of the future. This is a theory of past events. It's kind of like a why, but I figured it out. What the, what the, what the, what, 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 who was fighting? <laughs> I don't who, know. Who, who was, was fighting Rainey's family? Uh, uh, Robert. Yes. Y you think that? Okay. No. So you you can think already that, tell. No. You think that Aegon the Sixth Targaryen is going to marry Bella, Robert's no! daughter? <laughs> That's where you're going with this. I'm giving you this hint. Rainey's would be the one getting married, hypothetically. Rainey's is dead. <laughs> That's why it's hypothetical. We established oh, wait, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That makes sense. There was a plan for Rainies to marry somebody, and the marriage pact that was made was after Rainies died because they needed to uh, set up that tie again. You're right. You're right. There was a plan. Rainies was pledged to marry somebody from a very young age. There was a, a not plan. horribly unusual. A it's not particularly common there's a plan for rainies to marry somebody once told me oh. the you're, world you <laughs> we're too deep in the theory to uh to do smash mouth jokes. you're never too deep for smash mouth you're also you're getting colder it's not okay. about a marriage pact damn it, 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 it smash mouth okay, isn't so, closer smash so mouth wait, is, Ray, is not closer was, was, how far away is smash mouth well was um, rainies not an ice cube. But, what, what, was Rainey's meant to be an important political figure in Dorne's future? Not in Dorne. In, um, in, in the Iron Throne's future. Okay, so oh, Rainey's yeah. was supposed oh. to marry somebody. Rainey's was supposed to marry somebody in uh, line to the Iron Throne. W wait, uh, was, was so the uh, house that they were fighting was Rainey's going to marry Rob? Rob? Hmm. Oh, Robert? No, or... Rob, Rob Stark. Oh, oh, I forgot that Rob Stark. I was like, Rob's not alive. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, but you're you're getting there. Who's more important than the Starks? Um, uh, was the, he's the, well, married like, to uh, Jamie. Tar there's Targaryen incest here. It could be that uh, Viserys was supposed to marry uh, um, uh, Rhaenys. That's a, that's a good point. Um, a good point, but, but no. So, so okay. do you well, want me to tell you? No, or do you want no. me to give you the... No, we're, we're, we're close. We're close enough. Find find close. a match for Rhaenys Targaryen. Pre-war, pre who is no, a No, good... no, no. Oh, post-war? No, post-war. Post-war, who is a good match for Rhaenys Targaryen, right? Someone that that they would have assumed just after would be the important. war would be a good, like like, a good way to stitch the realm back together. Yeah, yeah, uh, would would establish peace uh, of some sort. Uh, yeah. So it would need to be somebody who is likely to cause problems if they were not uh, married into. Oh, oh, boy, does he cause problems? Maybe, maybe Edmure Tully. Edmure Tully doesn't cause problems. Uh, uh, this person causes problems on purpose. Uh, that that sounds like a Lannister to me. It uh, sure is. Is it Jamie? so? Well, Jamie's a little bit on old. the king's guard, so he okay. can't marry. A Lannister, Tyrion, Lannister Tyrion's is a strong word. Lannister is a strong word. Westerman. Lannister is no. a strong word. Is it Tyrion? No. Is it, Who somebody... would be a child what, or 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 born? What does Lannister is a strong word mean in this context? <laughs> okay, is Lannister. It... Lannister is actually not a strong word. Um, Baratheon would be a strong word. What are you talking about? Is it is it Renly who uh, is the right age, right? Oh, Marian. oh, oh! Is it something like the firstborn child of 
of Robert and and um, Cersei. Leanna. Yes. Or, or the firstborn child of Robert. So Joffrey was supposed to marry Rhaenys. Yes. So so the first part of the theory is that Elia didn't bother to do a baby swap for Rhaenys because she figured Rhaenys would be safe and raised betrothed to the first son of the incoming king for legitimacy reasons. This would have been oh. obvious to her. And she would have been shocked when Rhaenys was killed. She would have been like, yeah, duh. Oh, they're they're going to want to marry my child. Hostage. Yeah, she's yeah. a valuable political hostage. You can so get valuable. Some the most you get valuable. Some, you can get some legitimacy by uh, arranging a marriage uh, to have her stick around and be like, yep. Yeah. Uh, if you thought the old uh, line was the proper line, they're going to become the same line. We're going to marry into any of the remaining Targaryens in the family. Uh, and that's that's all there is to it. Uh, so that way, uh, you don't have pretenders in the future. You don't have somebody coming in and saying, you ousted me from the throne if you all share the same DNA. This is actually a thing that happened a lot in medieval Europe, too. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, two families who fought over the same stretch of land don't fight. Uh, throw some marriages together. All of a sudden, uh, it's a common bloodline. And that's that's precisely it. Now, yeah. who decided that Rainies would die? Uh, 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 Tywin. Presumably Tywin Lannister. At least that's yeah. what Oberyn believes. Yes. He gave yes. the order. So, so now you kind of have the second part of the theory, which is is that Tywin is a fucking idiot for not suggesting that Rainies be betrothed to Robert's firstborn with Cersei. Because would Dorne rebel against the daughter of Elia? Would Targaryen loyalists rebel against the daughter of Rhaegar? And the crowd well, could even start using the Targaryen sigil again, perhaps quartered. You know. It's possible, but it's also possible that uh, the Martells would say, give us her back. She has the, we had the right to determine her future, sort of thing. We are her most immediate family. But would Although, they as people who fought on the losing side, they would have very little room to uh, dictate anything. And more importantly, uh, she would be a hostage at the time. So they can just say, well, you know, uh, you either go along with her terms or we can just kill her outright. And they'll uh, probably yeah. quiet down after that. Although, Aubryn would probably come up with some sort of sneaky plan to try and break her out. Because that's what Aubryn does. Right, but but would Elia be thinking about it? He, he, she'd just be like, okay, she's going to live through this day. Yeah, Elia would not be thinking of that, probably. Moreover, the time frame she has to think about that is too short. So, so why would Tywin go so far? I mean, to, to what, it almost seems like he would want his son-in-law's whole regime to fail, taking his daughter and her grandchildren down with it. Why would that happen? Or why would he make that decision? What is the logic behind killing Rhaenys? Well, she is she is Dornish, and they believe in in women inheriting. So perhaps he could have perceived a threat um, from the Dornish when they say no. She is the heir to the throne. Could have like uh, people have already snuck out of the Red Keep this week. Um, uh, uh, kill her before she gets smuggled out of the city. damn okay these are all good points why did tywin order the death of Rhaenys? yeah she, she's a, was... she's perhaps the most useful person on the continent was thinking. And, and elia is a great hostage too like you can get elia to sign off on the marriage honestly yeah the three of them should have been taken hostage even if you know dra the dragon spawn and all that, like you have a, a, or, or a ton kill of the male heir. Yeah, you, know. you can kill the male heir, uh, or you can uh, uh, promise him to uh, goodness. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess the yeah, is he, the least he's, problematic thing you can do. He's but. always going to be the crown prince, and I be, I think Jamie thinks about this, right? Jamie, when he's um. He's remembering killing Rossart. Um, he thinks to himself that he had a he he could have decided. Oh oh yes yes someone 
uh, found him on the Iron Throne and uh, uh, after the king was dead and asked him, uh, uh, he said, the person who came to see him said, uh, uh, what are you doing? Uh, uh, and Jamie said, there is a, the, the king is dead. And the other person hesitates and says, who should I tell, who should I say replaced him? Uh, and Jamie realized he, he had a decision to make. He could say Tywin Lannister or Jamie Lannister or Aegon the Sixth, uh, or say nothing. And he chose to say nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Tywin made these decisions too. He could have said, okay, we will continue the Targaryen regime with a new, decent Targaryen kid, or kill the Targaryen kid and carry on and, and marry one of Robert's kids to a, a, a legitimate Targaryen. Um, or, but, but he decided to completely uproot, which is for sure not the most politically savvy play. Yeah. If, he, if you're looking to, like, uh, immediately grab as much power as possible, what you would do is you would uh, take these kids, put one of them on the throne uh, immediately with, like, you know, Aegon, the baby, needs a regent. Declare yourself the regent. Uh, and then negotiate a peace with the rebelling kingdoms. Because Robert being put on the throne was an afterthought. They really didn't have anybody else that they're on there, and he had some Targaryen lineage. You can put Aegon the baby on the throne, pledge uh, a you know Lannister loyalist uh, kid to marry into the family. Uh, Tyrion is uh, quite young; he can be set up to marry uh, um, Rhaenys, uh, and then bada bing, bada boom, you've like consolidated Lannister control. I don't know if the uh, like Robert. And Ned might not go for it. And it's the biggest hurdle you have is that you just get taken down with the armies that are already rebelling. And it's a huge risk. I'll admit that. But I think the reward's kind of worth it. Yeah. And, Especially because I, I don't think that the, Robert is inclined to kill a rando child. He was fine with it happening at the very least. Uh, although he was, you know, enthused. But do the. I guess it's, you know, if you save. Uh, Elia and her kids and pledge to safely return uh, the other two to Dorne, does that placate the Martells? Are they okay with that? And moreover, does that uh, uh, the other loyalist houses, does, are the Tyrells okay with your uh, brief coup? Obviously they probably didn't like the Mad King, but you did commit regicide still. Mm, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. So, Redist, are you suggesting that you have found a, a, a good logical reason why Tywin did this? I don't know if I would call it logical, but I've certainly found a reason. Do you want a card? I would love a card. Uh, just the entirety of the Reigns of Castamere. That that's just, like, this is just Tywin's M.O.? His... His uh oh, uh, it's because it's because he felt slighted, right? He yeah, this, what was, what might he feel slighted about? Uh, he he was kicked out as hand of the king, and he also believes that uh um his uh, Tyrion is not his kid. He also believes that uh, uh Tyrion is the child of uh um the Mad King, so he's taking out his vengeance on House Targaryen for multiple different slights. Uh, because if he believes that Targar uh, Tyrion is not his kid, that means his wife died in childbirth for you know a Targaryen child. Uh, oh, this so is, is, is this a Tyr this is not a Tyrion Targaryen theory. No, not necessarily, but it is. He doesn't good have to be, but if if he, belie but if he Tywin believes, it. believes it, yeah, Tywin believes that. I don't even know if you're really my own son. It is something he says to Tyrion, 
Or uh, specifically, it, I have a reason why he might be mad at Rhaegar. Well, Cersei wanted what? to marry Rhaegar. Yeah, Cersei thought she was going to be burying him. Oh, oh, and Rhaegar, the, the match with Rhaegar was refused. Yes. Because Rhaegar, and, and then he had a, uh, then Elliot couldn't have kids anymore, and there was another opportunity for Cersei to marry uh, Rhaegar, and then he runs off with Lyanna Stark. Yes. So that's twice uh, that Cersei could view herself as, as uh, like, you know, turned away, not good enough. And Tywin would thus feel turned away, not good enough. Which is a, just another slight in a long list of, in his mind, slights from the Targaryens. Yeah. Hmm. So what, what, what the, what the, what the, what are we? Hang on, run me through it again. So basically my thinking is um, that Tywin ordered Rhaenys' killing because he felt slighted for a plethora of reasons, but including because he thought Cersei would be betrothed to Prince Rhaegar. Um, and so he had a specific vendetta against that marriage and the children of that marriage. Um, and for that reason, he did not do the obvious thing, which would be to preserve Rhaenys so that she could be married to the first son of the So these these children represented uh, uh, someone scoffing at Tywin. Someone didn't like bow to Tywin's pride. Yes. So he murdered three politically valuable prisoners of war? Kind of arguing that he is, that despite him thinking he is a genius, he's more emotionally driven than intellectually driven, than logic driven. I mean, that, I believe that. I believe... Uh... As much as he likes to play the cold, logical, smart strategist, he has a seething emotional side that he is just ignoring. And he is pretending he is making rational decisions when really he's going after people who slighted him. And you can see it in his trial of Tyrion because he is actually taking uh, his only child who is not actively working to his detriment at that point. Uh, Jamie's kind of a neutral, neutralized at that point in terms of like his benefits and all that. Uh, uh, Cersei's like a disaster Tyrion did a lot of really great things but he can't get over his hatred for Tyrion and that like leads to him setting the events that lead to his own death into motion uh, which is not the most logical thing now he couldn't have predicted all that but it also sets into motion a scenario where Cersei is the most powerful person in King's Landing and is destroying his legacy like it's a speed run world record that she's trying to set. Uh, curious. The, I do agree. Tywin is a very emotional man who hides it under a cold exterior. Ty Tywin sucks. Tywin Tywin su Tywin sucks. Yeah. But this is not a Tywin I've ever thought about before. Tywin took a grudge so seriously that he murdered two babies. Who Why else? who are the most valuable individuals on the planet at that moment. Ty, Ty, Tywin is so, holds a grudge to heart so well 
one that was not even against him, that he eradicated an entire township, basically. Yeah. Actually, two of them, because it's the Tarbacks, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, he d yeah. Yeah, he he takes slights personally and ends them violent and ends them violent. But the Tarbacks, uh, the Tarbacks were not, the Tarbacks and Reigns were not valuable to him. They were more valuable as an example than as continued vassals. Rainey's Targaryen is valuable to him. Now we're just taught, this is just an interesting thing to think about. Why, why kill them? They, the, they are, this is the only reason I could think of. This was originally going to be a why episode. They are only good enough. They are only good to you. They are only better for you dead from a sense of self-satisfaction. Man, I guess it's the same with Tyrion, isn't it? Tyrion, it, because Tywin could have stopped the trial at any time by just dissenting against Cersei, saying, no, Cersei, that's stupid. Obviously, he didn't poison Joffrey. Uh, and he chose not to do that. The only reason, Ty, Tyrion is only better for Tywin on a very public trial out of a sense of self-satisfaction for Tywin. It's certainly not politically advantageous. So why did he let Tyrion go on trial to, to write a, like the, the littlest of slights that came out of Tyrion's mouth 10 years ago? Right. Yeah. Because he was embarrassed. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, he's exacting his uh, uh, vengeance. He is showing people that you don't mess with House Lannister in the least productive, least long term thinking way possible, which is exactly what he does. Uh, Tywin is not satisfied if he is doing something that will pay off for his house when he's not alive to see it. He's the opposite of Ned Stark in that regard. Ned Stark d builds up so much goodwill that he is not alive to see, and that was the point. It was to make sure that it like, carried on for generations. Tywin Lannister is doing things that are uh, effective in his lifetime. Uh, damn the consequences 10 years, 15 years down the line. He's a petty piece of shit, isn't he? Yeah. Iwin did not, in fact, shit gold. He's not the genius he thinks he is. He's just rich. He's yeah. just rich. You know, I really... You know what? I think I bought into some of Tywin Lan... I think I bought into some of Tywin Lannister's own... Propaganda. Own, own yeah. press releases, yeah. Because in my brain, he really is a very savvy political player. He's a savvy but, political player uh, who knows how to make the correct friends and delete the correct people to maintain his hold on power. Um, and he does so uh, during peacetime, causing minimal damage and disruption. And I think that that is some like like little finger wrote a propaganda ad and tywin shipped it and i bought it this almost makes me think that that cersei's comment about her being tywin with teats is actually a bit more accurate than i originally thought like i was like oh cersei my you god fucking yeah dumbass. she she is just as petty she she's is. just bad at the uh she's bad at the not having the consequences pay off in your own lifetime and also the uh 
PR aspect of it. She's not good yeah. at selling. Ty- Tywin absolutely, yeah, went after people for uh, personal slights, but he always made it seem he had the veneer of I was doing what was right for the realm and it was harsh, but it was what needed to be done. You know, uh, if these two houses are disloyal, uh, we need to show what the punishment for disloyalty is. When really they're punish- he was punishing them for making a fool of his father. And uh, when he, you know, struck down the Targaryens, he could say, this is the punishment you get for, uh, you know, plunging the realm into an unnecessary war and putting a madman on the throne. And we need to make sure there's never another Targaryen that inherits. And really, it's this is for all the slights. This is for knocking me off of uh, my position as a uh, uh, hand of the king. This is for refusing a marriage with my uh, daughter twice. This is for putting Jamie on the King's Guard against my will. Uh, I'm going to show you what happens when you fuck with Tywin Lannister. Hmm. Holy shit. He's just a fucking con artist. He, he's, he's a piss baby who's uh, learned how to uh, do PR. He's just, he's just a, a rich, whiny trust fund kid. <laughs> Oh my a little bit, god! Yeah. What a fucking asshole! <laughs> I mean, we've been new. Yeah, we knew he was an asshole, but he always he, he always played it off as uh, that's how you get results, sort of way, right? Oh my god, uh, he ju- he got lucky twice, and and commissioned a song about it that got stuck in everybody's head. Yeah, yep, yeah. and that's uh, what that's what he does. That Cersei doesn't. He controls the PR, and, and he did the same thing afterwards by showing the bodies to uh, you know uh, Robert and the rest after they were did the crowning ceremony. He showed them, you know, like they're dead. It's over. Targaryens are done, and we needed to get rid of them. Uh, and that was the prevailing message after the war, uh, the Roberts Rebellion was, we need to uh, get rid of Targaryens. There are no more Targaryen kings, no more dragon spawn. Uh, and it's hard for me to believe that Tywin wasn't part of that propaganda building, right? Like, it, it legitimizes all of his actions if it was a war against Targaryens. Motherfucker. 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 What a... He's just... A Jesus Christ. He's just... He's just a rich prick. Holy shit. I don't have a name for this theory. I'm currently calling it Tywin is either an idiot or a really petty asshole. It is known, which is not a good snappy title. I don't know if that fits on a thumbnail, but we can try. No, I don't think so. We can, we can have the thumbnail be like, uh, uh, why, why kill Rainies? Question mark. Uh, uh, because that is the central question here, and it is answered by this. This is the like most logical reason in my mind. Uh, he and, and Aubrey is one hundred percent right. Who gave the order? Right, like he knew. He, it's not like uh the two most dangerous, most reprehensible, most willing to murder children people, just uh, in Tywin's entire army. The two of them just happen to find Elia. They just happen to end up there without any, uh, uh, you know, telling them, go to this very specific, very prominent location. That they just happen to do that without being ordered to do so is ridiculous. And, like, Oberyn knows that. Oberyn is well aware of that, which means it must have been on Tyrion's orders. Which means he must have wanted those kids dead. Because if you wanted kids to be safely brought somewhere the last person i would send is the mountain (laughs) so it's like if i 
It's like if I uh, like wanted to deliver a message and I wanted to make sure it wasn't awkward at all, and I picked Jeff Goldblum to be the person who delivered the message. How dare you? <laughs> so uh, we have some uh, very very unfortunate news. <laughs> Your uh, yeah the uh, oh my a... god oh, limited oh, warranty. Jeff, Gold, Jeff Goldblum is the one who has to tell Doran about Elliot and her kids dying. Damn it! Oh. I was doing that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Sir Goldblum, you'll ride to Dorn. It must go faster. <laughs> must go faster. <laughs> so uh, Doran, you're gonna want to sit down for this. I know I shouldn't have said that. I'm so sorry. Uh oh God! <laughs> Hit the button! <laughs> Hit the button! Zach! Uh, that was a little cruel. Zach! Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum would say something like that and apologize immediately. Zach, how could that. that's not an okay jo- joke to make? You apologize to Jeff Goldblum right now. I'm sorry, Jeff Goldblum, that I implied that you would make a, a accidentally ableist comment and then immediately realize it and then awkwardly prattle to yourself for five minutes. But you have to understand why I thought that, Jeff Goldblum. Do I do I need to cut this? <laughs> do do we need to cut this, Reddist? No, I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> maybe. But- but Zach, and I, de- the, I demand. And we're back. I de- and we're back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> you know Zach, what? Yeah, I decided we. I decided we are cutting that. And we're back. Uh, Zach's decided we're cutting it. Um. Uh. Zach, please. Okay, it was funny to me. Your. That's a, I don't want. I don't want Jeff Goldblum to come into the comments and be like, I would never <laughs> say something like that. Zach, I. I demand a tithe. Uh, you must tell a joke about yourself. Um. That uh 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 you want told to the same uh uh that that is as rude to you. Uh, I, I mean, we could just uh, we could just be that it's me. I'm the person who has to tell Dora Martell that his sister. No, and no, that's murder, right? that's not why we're not telling the joke. Uh, I I could see myself saying something really stupid during that. I don't know if it would be as offensive. Uh, <laughs> And we're back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Redist, where can people find you on the internet? I am at the lion judges the wolf on Tumblr. I don't know. We might have said that at the beginning of the video. We it's did. It's okay. Say, I don't know. I don't, maybe right. my brain Say it again. Good. Everybody, everybody check out your Tumblr. Uh, it, it's really good. Uh, I think. I think I looked at it for five minutes. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I... Uh, I am on a streak of never watching The Simpsons, never watching South Park, and never opening Tumblr. That's really? a good uh, streak. Uh, uh, Zach, uh, where can people find you on the internet? I don't know. They if can we're... find. Yeah, they go ahead. They find me. They can find me here, or at Zach from the club, or at uh, um, uh, the Detour Lacroix music, or uh dj zoda or multiple discords uh or uh the scp wiki at gerrymander bassist or gerrymander bassist however you want to pronounce that also uh, and, uh, and, sc- scoring in the background of certain videos uh wait wait, wait. oh uh yes oh yeah uh you, you can hear one of my songs instrumentals in the background of a, a mr beat video uh, where he also gives out my full name, so uh, that one. Uh, and really, really doxing myself in this episode. Uh, I don't know if this is staying in under. <laughs> we're making Tom do so many edits. Uh, uh, and we're back. And we're back. Redis, where can people find you? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> everybody, everybody, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.